Hey everybody, um, so today we just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, MQTT and LabVIEW. So uh, for those of you who may not know, MQTT is Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. So this is a really lightweight, low power way to communicate data. Um, it's very popular in kind of the IoT world, so lots of different devices, um, sensors, etc. can send data um, using MQTT to yeah, different services and products and software and whatnot. Um, and yeah, so um, if you are using, interested in using MQTT, um, you will need to install some packages um, from VIPM. So this doesn't ship out of the box. Um, but if you go open up your add-ons and go down to um, LabVIEW open source project, you can see I have MQTT right there. Um, and here I've got both my uh, broker and my client. Um, so not really diving too into the weeds of what MQTT is, just wanted to mention, um, so we're um, MQTT all centers around a broker. So your broker is where all messages are going in and out of. So any device, any software, et cetera, is all working through um, the broker. Um, and essentially it's your server, right? You're going to have some sort of MQTT server. Um, and this could be installed on a computer, on a server. It could be a cloud service, et cetera. There's a lot of different cloud MQTT brokers out there. Um, and basically all of your different devices and software, et cetera, et cetera, these are all MQTT clients. And they can either um, publish, meaning that they send data to the broker, or they can subscribe, meaning that they can subscribe to certain topics um, in that, that that MQTT broker is managing, and then they will receive updated data as those uh, topics get updated. New publishes are made. So, um, And a client also wanted to mention does not have to just publish or subscribe. A client can both publish and subscribe as well. Um, but yeah, and then topics, this is basically just the, a way to manage data. So you can assign a name um, and uh, you can kind of organize topics. Um, it's very similar how it's organized to like a file structure, for example. So you can have kind of a hierarchy of um, topics um, and then you can query those topics. Um, so first I wanted to walk through and these examples here are they, they all ship with uh, the MQTT tools. So you'll see in your palettes um, the ability to go and you know open these up um, and you know, view these same examples. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we're opening a TCP connection. So by default, MQTT is uses TCP. It can also be built on top of other technologies as well, like WebSockets is another example, um, and also supports like TLS for encryption as well. Um, but um, by default, we're going to use TCP. Um, I'm, we're going to have to pass in an address where we're trying to connect. In my instance, I'm going to run everything on this computer, so localhost works fine. Um, and then I also need to specify a port number, so um, using 18... 83. Um, from there, we're going to use this create server function. Um, and from there, we're going to read the server public events. So we're just pulling out these events and then registering those here. So we've kind of got this uh, uh, event right there. Um, so we can see how many people are connected to this broker. And then we're just going to say start. Um, and that's really all you need on the server side. Everything else is kind of handled for you through this library. Um, and then when we're done, we're just uh, using the stop and destroy. So that's kind of it for our server. So let's run that. Now let's look at our publisher example. So to connect as a publisher, we are going to use the configure TCP connection, specifying the address and port. Um, now we're going to use the client function, so we're going to create an MQTT client. Um, from there we're going to read the public events, and we're also going to read the MQTT public events. So this is going to include our stop event and our error event. Um, and then we're going to start our MQTT client. Um, on the stop side, similar, we're going to stop and destroy. 
But now let's look at kind of what's going on in here. So now in this timeout case, every 100 milliseconds, we are going to first just check, hey, are we connected to the broker? If we're not connected to the broker, just do nothing. But if we are connected to the broker, we just need to use this publish function, um, which is going to um, allow us to pass in a topic name. Um, so like I said, this is gonna be basically how you can organize your data by name. Um, and then we're just writing in a value to it. Um, and this accepts a variant, so you can pass in, you know, uh, strings, floats, clusters, etc. cetera. Um, you know, whatever data type you wanna work with. Um, it, and that's really all you have to require. Um, there is quality of service options if you care. So I don't wanna to get too into what quality of service is, but basically this is a way you can make sure that messages are only received once or that you wanna broad, broadcast them potentially multiple times, you know, stuff like that. Um, or just like a fire and forget, right? So just send it. Um, if it's received, cool. If it's not received, cool. I don't care. But um, yeah, and then out here we get this uh, published so we can see that it was in fact published. Um, sorry, I guess I should show. Um, we have a couple controls as well. So um, when you click the connect button, um, it's just going to use this uh, connect to server. And if you're already connected, it's going to use the disconnect from server. So nothing crazy. Um, and yeah, that's a, uh, whoops pretty much it on publishing. Um, really, really simple the way they've set up the library. So let's connect our publisher. So this is running now and click connect and you can see I am successfully publishing data. You can also see on my server that I now have one connection. Um, so I can just leave this publisher chugging along. Um, now let's look at subscribing, how we can do that. Um, so it's very, very similar. All of this startup code is essentially the same, right? We're configuring the TCP connection. We are creating the client, getting all the events, and starting it. Um, shutdown is exactly the same as well. Um, so um, we do have this uh, pu client public events application message. So um, this is what's actually going to be receiving events as topics that we've subscribed to are getting new data. Um, so this is going to um, use this uh, get topic name to basically extract the name from the topic. Um, and we can create, yeah, whatever logic we want to you know, do different things with different topics. In this case, we just want this topic, my topic name. And then we're just going to use this decode application message to basically take the message and extract the data. And here we can convert from a variant and then we can read our data. So that's pretty much all we really need to do to basically read these things that we've subscribed to. Um, I'll show you. So for connection wise, we're connecting the same way to the broker as we were on the publisher client. Um, but um, when we connect, it's not actually gonna do anything until we've subscribed. So when we click the subscribe button, that is going to A, check if we're connected. If we're not, just do nothing. But if we are connected, we're going to use this subscribe function um, to subscribe to a specific topic name. That way we can get updates as that topic is updated. Um, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much all it takes really to make a subscriber. So let's go run this guy. Let's connect. So you can see our server now has two connections to it. Um, and I can click subscribe. So now we are subscribed. So our publisher is sending data to our broker, that MQTT server. And then the, the broker is also sending that to any amount of clients that are subscribed to that same topic. So if no one's subscribed, it will just discard it. Um, but we could have any amount of additional subscribers you know, viewing this data, and it was just going to go forward all of that to whoever's connected. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, just as a side note, I wanted to show um, that not everything has to be uh, a subscriber or a publisher. So in this case, um, you know, just showing, you know, startup code is exactly the same. So this isn't specific to whether we are creating a publisher, subscriber, or both. 
Um, this is just always how we're going to connect over TCP. Um, and then we can subscribe. So using that same subscribe code, but we can also publish. Um, so here we're just taking this error and publishing that to my status. Um, so yeah, um, this, this now has code that will subscribe and publish. So I can run this. I can click connect. You can see my connections is now three on my broker. Um, and let's subscribe. So now I have two different things that are subscribed to this data that's being published from this guy, um, all being handled through our MQTT broker. So, um, and that's really all it is to using MQTT in LabVIEW. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, this allows you to connect to all sorts of different types of technologies and devices, especially in the IoT world. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully that was helpful and thank you guys for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.